Hello, everyone. This is Richard from Modern Health Span. Today, I'm going to look at a couple of the conclusions from this paper, NAD Metabolism, Role in Senescence, Regulation and Aging, of which Dr. Claudia Chenny from the Mayo Clinic is the main author. Here is an overview of the paper. The geroscience hypothesis proposes that if we fix the changes that come with aging, we can slow down or mitigate all the diseases of aging rather than trying to tackle them one at a time. To do this, we need to understand how the hallmarks interact with each other. Among these, NAD has been shown to interact with several of the other hallmarks, especially cellular senescence. Also, NAD metabolism does change with age. The relationship between the two is complex. On the one hand, low NAD can cause mitochondria and DNA damage, leading to senescence. On the other hand, low NAD may limit the generation of SASP and development of senescence, as these are metabolically demanding and require NAD. The interplay between these two has not been fully explored. So it'd be good to understand how NAD metabolism and boosting affect the other hallmarks of aging, particularly senescent cells. By way of background, a quick review on NAD levels with age and senescent cells. The paper goes through both of these in detail and is a great resource. The link is in the description and it is open access if you would like to check it out. I will briefly touch on these and then look at some of the conclusions. First, let's talk about NAD. NAD is made from sources in our diet, tryptophan, nicotinic acid, nicotinamide riboside, nicotinamide mononucleotide, and nicotinamide, which go through various pathways to create NAD. The most abundant source of NAD is the salvage pathway. This takes nicotinamide, which is generated from the breakdown of NAD, and regenerates the NAD via NMN with the help of NAMPT. NAD levels decrease with age. They mention in the paper that in various human tissues, the levels have been shown to decrease from 10 to 50% with age and with chronic diseases of aging. NAMPT, the rate limiting enzyme in the salvage pathway, also goes down with age. And there is an increase in the proteins which consume NAD. Particularly, CD38 is thought to be one of the main culprits for this. There are other proposed mechanisms which may contribute to the lower NAD discussed in the paper, and the complete picture is not currently understood. The decrease with age and association with chronic disease imply that low NAD may be a contributing or modifiable factor in aging or diseases. Cellular senescence is when a cell enters cell cycle arrest but resists programmed cell death or apoptosis. The cause of senescent cells are varied and include mitochondrial dysfunction, oxidative stress, DNA damage, and the possibility of the cell becoming cancerous. Lower NAD levels are associated with many of these causes, such as increased DNA damage and mitochondrial dysfunction. Senescent cells will often secrete senescence-associated secretory phenotype, or SASP, a cocktail of inflammatory and pro-growth chemicals, which is one of the main contributors to the chronic inflammation of aging. The relationship between NAD levels and senescent cells is complex. Lower NAD levels allow more DNA damage as the PARPs, DNA repair enzymes, require NAD and also cause mitochondrial dysfunction and an increase in reactive oxygen species and greater cellular damage. These factors can lead to the cell entering senescence. However, generating SASP and the development of senescence are metabolically expensive activities which require NAD. To this end, senescent cells upregulate NAMT to increase NAD. The SASP, which is secreted, then regulates the NAD in other cells through promotion of CD38, which consumes NAD. Lowering the NAD then moves these cells towards senescence as well. In the paper, the authors call for more study on the interaction between NAD, senescence, and cancer, especially for long-term administration of NAD boosters. They also point out the preclinical benefits which have been seen in inhibiting CD38 with a pigeon in or 78C, where 78C is a chemical which is only available for laboratory uses. In the conclusion, they point out that boosting NAD without removing the senescent cells may increase 
the SAS production. However, there are potential benefits with combining senolytics with an NAD boosting regimen. The authors call for studies in this area. For me, the take home message is that I need to take a senolytic to reduce my senescent cells, an NAD booster to raise NAD, and also a CD38 inhibitor. At the moment, for me, these are fisetin, NMN, and epigenin, respectively. Thank you for your attention. I hope that you found the video helpful. I wish you all well, and I will speak to you again soon.